So this video looks at lenses and how we can use lenses to form images. So firstly, what do we mean when we talk about imaging and forming images? Well, um, any object will have a whole bunch of light rays coming off it. And those light rays will move off in a whole bunch of different directions. We're talking thousands and thousands of different directions. Now, if we have something like a lens, we can gather up some of those light rays and we can make them meet at a point. And if, when they meet at a point, we can kind of get it so that the light rays are arranged in the same way they were when they left the object, and we'll get an image formed at that point. So what I mean there is that if you look at this picture here, all of the rays that are coming off that person's head, they head off in different directions, but when they pass through the lens, they're then bent inwards and forced again to meet in the same way that they were when they left the object. So all of the head rays head off in different directions, pass through the lens, and then are forced to meet again back here, forming an image of the head. We could do the same thing with the feet. All the rays that come off the feet, some of them will be captured by the lens and they'll be focused inwards over here and they'll sort of reassemble themselves into an image of the original object's feet. Now, depending on where you put your lens and where you put the object and the image, the image that's formed may be bigger or smaller than the original object and it may also be inverted, which means it may be upside down like this image over here is, okay, upside down man. And then the last thing I'll mention before I move on, because this will turn up in later videos, um, when we're talking about how images are formed, it does depend a lot on the uh, relative position of the object, the lens, and the image. So we need to know two things, object distance, DO for object, and the image distance, DI for image. That's going to become more important when we look at ray tracing diagrams and how to solve problems of lenses in the next video. So the simplest kind of imaging you can have is what we call a pinhole camera. Now a pinhole camera doesn't have a lens like a regular camera. It's basically just a box that's dark on the inside and the only way that light can enter into that box is through a tiny little pinhole, like I'm talking just a pin prick in a piece of aluminium foil or something like that. Tiny little pinhole and then on the other side of that box, you've got something like photographic film to record the image that forms on the back wall of that pinhole camera. The whole thing is sealed up to stop light from coming in except through that little pin prick at the front. Now the way a pinhole camera works, the way it can form an image, is that because the hole's so tiny, light rays can really only go from an, in a straight line from the object to the back wall of this box. So the rays that get to this bottom part here, where I'm pointing my mouse, the only way you can get to that is those rays that originated on the top of the tree. So unlike a lens where you can bend light rays and make them travel in different directions, in this case, the only light rays that can sort of come in at that angle and make it through this tiny hole and get to the back of the box there are the light rays that travel in a straight line. Same deal with the roots over here as well. The only light rays that can come in, pass through this tiny hole and then hit the top part of the box are those light rays that came off the bottom of the tree and have travelled in a straight line to get through that hole. But basically, you end up with this kind of a diagram. You end up with an upside down inverted image being formed there. Now, the thing about pinhole cameras is because only like one light ray can come in from each part of the object, basically, it does, a pinhole camera can't gather very much light, which means that the image that's formed is very, very, very dim. Now, down here we have an example of a, pic, a picture taken with a pinhole camera. Now, that picture would not have been formed in a split second like you have with a regular camera with a lens where you can gather lots of light. This image probably had to be formed by exposing the film inside, so they're using old regular photographic film, exposing the film for probably several minutes, I'd say, because the actual amount of light that gets through a pinhole camera is tiny. And if you just let it go for a split second, like you do with a regular camera when the shutter opens, you would barely be able to see any sort of image formed on the photographic film. So a pinhole camera is a very simple way of making an image, but it's not really a, an effective way of capturing images. So you don't use a pinhole camera for actual photography. It's only for this sort of like special artsy photography that we use it. So that's like the simplest kind of imaging. Now let's move on and have a look at 
lenses. But before we do that, we're just going to mention one thing about real and virtual images. Now, we have mentioned this before in class when we talked about mirrors. But basically, a real image is produced by something like a lens, or in this case, the pinhole camera produces a real image as well. And that real image can be shone onto something. The light that forms up that image can be projected onto a wall or a screen or something like that. And you can then walk up to that screen and touch the light where the image is formed. So that's how I always remember what a real image is. I can actually reach up to the screen and touch that real image. Now, the thing about real images, and you can see in this little diagram over here, that when you get a real image that's formed by a lens, it will always end up being inverted. So it'll always end up being upside down. That real image could be bigger or smaller than the original object, depending on where you put your screen and where you put your lens but um, the image that's produced will always be inverted. So you might say to yourself, well, why is it when I use a projector to shine something up on a wall or a screen or something like that, why is the image the right way up? The reason for that being is the, the, when the actual image is shone out of the projector, it's upside down as it comes out of the projector. When it passes through the lens on the front of the projector, that lens inverts the image and produces an inverted image on the screen but because the original image was upside down compared to the way we wanted it, then the inverted image will end up being the right way up, which is what we want. So that's real images. Now, virtual images we spoke about before as being formed inside a mirror. Remember, when you look at a mirror, you can see an image of yourself inside the mirror, but it appears to be some distance behind the surface of the mirror, and you can't reach out and touch that image of yourself. So similarly, a virtual image inside a lens will appear to be inside the lens. You won't be able to take that virtual image and shine it onto a screen. It only exists inside the lens. So this diagram here kind of shows you what might how this might work. So here you've got a candle. The candle is sending off light rays. Those light rays pass through a lens. And in this case, those light rays sort of head off in a whole bunch of different directions what we call diverging rays, and they won't meet at a point. But if you place your eye here, and then you trace those rays backwards, because remember your eye always thinks that light travels in a straight line, those rays will meet at a point behind the lens, or it appears to be behind the lens. So those dotted lines indicate that they're not actual real light rays you're tracing back here. And what you'll see is a virtual image, but only when you look back through the lens. So we've kind of got a little illustration of that in action here. So here we have a virtual image being produced inside a lens. Now we can't take that virtual image and shine it onto a screen. That's what makes it a virtual image. Okay, so next one. Now in terms of lenses, there are many, many, many different kinds of lenses and shapes. We really only need to know two, concave and convex lenses. So convex lenses, and let's not get confused about this because everyone always does. Convex lenses curve inwards like that. Sorry, convex lenses curve outwards. See what I mean about being confused? Convex lenses curve outwards like that. And when light passes through it, the light converges to a point, which means it gets focused to a point. Now, there are two kinds. There's a plano convex lens, which is flat on one side. That's what the plano means. And convex on the other. Or well, there is what we call biconvex lenses, which is curved on both sides. Now, when I say convex lens, I'm going to mean this guy here, the biconvex lens. And similarly, we have concave lenses that curve inwards, and you can have a plano concave lens that's flat on one side and curves inwards on the other, or you can have a biconcave lens that's concave on both sides. And again, when I say concave lens, I'm going to be talking about this guy particularly. Now, if you pass light through a concave lens, the light from the concave lens will diverge, which means it spreads outwards and it doesn't focus at a point. For the repeat, concave lenses focus light inwards. They converge or bend inwards to meet at a point called F, the focal point. And the distance, or the focus, and the distance between the center of the convex lens and that point F is called the focal length, of the lens, and we usually use the symbol little f for that. Now the focusing, if you, if you want to know, occurs because there's two lots of refraction going on here. Light rays refract 
as they pass from air into glass, and then they refract again as they pass from the glass back into the air. So by controlling the shape and the size of the lens, you can control how much the light rays are refracted inwards as they pass through the lens, and you can therefore control where the, the lens focuses light to a point. Now, convex lenses, for the most part, form real images. It is possible to form a virtual image with a convex lens. You would have seen that in that last slide, that little photo we had. But for the most part, convex lenses form real images. And all the examples that we're going to look at in this course will be of convex lenses forming real images. On the other hand, a concave lens, when light passes through that, it refracts. But when it refracts, the light rays are bent outwards and you get a diverging light ray is being produced. Now, because these rays will never meet to the point, you don't get a real image being formed. It's impossible, not unless you put a second lens there somewhere. But if you trace these rays backwards, you can see that they meet at a point F, but the dashed lines indicate that this point F will be a virtual image. You can only see it by looking back through the lens like that, and that you won't actually be able to touch that image or to project it on the screen. But because it does meet at a point F here, it is possible to define a focal length for concave lenses, just like we did for convex lenses. So again, the focal length of a concave lens would be the distance between its center and this point F in a horizontal line. Okay, so that's it for this video. It's just a brief look at what an image is and concave and convex lenses and how they form images. The next video is going to go on to how you actually solve problems with this. We're going to restrict ourselves to looking at just convex lenses, and we're going to restrict ourselves to looking at convex lenses that form real images. Now, we're going to be drawing diagrams like this, but don't panic because it won't be quite as complicated as it looks. It's pretty straightforward once you've seen a few examples. So that's next time, but until then, I will see you later.